There's only one way to make the beats drop. Chef Keenan? I'm about to drop these beats? <laughs> My name is Chef Keenan Michaels. I'm the chef and owner of Keenan's Kitchen, and there's the start of my brand new cooking show. It's called The Rolling with Chef Keenan. I'm basically from Sinamantan. I'm a boy from Cape Town, and there's some of my um, favorite dishes that I like to cook. I'm in a beautiful home in Grassy Farm for my friend Ricky and Zach, and I'm going to be cooking for them this afternoon a three course taste, a three course menu. Um, check it out and see what I'm going to be cooking. First, we're going to start off with uh, one of the elements that's going with the cheese, um, which is garlic. So, I'm going to be wrapping this up and putting this in the oven, and we're going to come back to this a bit later. Under our cheese now. Garlic out. I got some uh, tortilla rats, which I'm just busy toasting. Garlic should be nice and soft. That is what you want. Just look at that. Oh, beautiful. Check the color. That's what you want. Oh, that's just a rose garlic flavor. That is fantastic. So just put these aside. We're gonna incorporate this into our cheese. Just give a nice toast on your tor tortilla wraps. Quite hot, so you have to work quickly with it. The secret of working with this is work with it while it's hot so you can incorporate it into the cheese. Look at the color on that. No color means no flavor. And we're all about the flavor here, so that's what we're after. Moving along. So we've got a good char on there. That's the color that you want. And these bad boys are gonna go in the oven. Get it nice and crispy. So we've got a good color on there. In the oven, give that a couple of minutes, skin it nice and toasted. Remember, no color means no flavor. Then move on to our cheese. For our cheese, metal bowl, double thick yogurt, very, very important to use double thick yogurt. The cheese we're gonna be making is a lovely. Get your yogurt out there. And then you can add any flavors that you want. You're damn making a roast garlic lovener, so that's it. Roast garlic, just work it, just mash it up. Just mash up the garlic. Get the garlic in there. All the garlic. Awesome. And just start working your garlic into your cheese. For this purpose, I'll just use a whisk. Do you want the garlic flavor all over? I'm gonna use a seasoning. Just gonna use a little bit of lemon and black pepper seasoning. Remember, there's absolutely no salt in here, so that's enough. So we're just gonna work it. Alternatively, you can add some fresh herbs like. Uh, Parsley, coriander, chives. And that's it. Lovely done. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start setting our lovely now. Another bowl, rice cradle, down. What we use in the industry is just some cheesecloth. Open it up nicely. Lay it down. And then we're just gonna start packing this in there. Just getting it all in there. Now the secret to the lovely is the way you tie it because you want all the, all the way out of here. So you're just gonna tie it once. Make sure nothing leaks out. Get a good knot. 
and just tie it. Tie it as tight as you can. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put some weight on there so we can separate all the curve or the weight. So we're gonna put something flat down and just push down. Put some weight in here, put it in the fridge, let it sit for four days. Fortunately, I have one I've made before. And I'm just about to take it out and see how it's looking. Cool, so here we have a lavender that I made a couple of days ago. So let's just unwrap this bad boy and see how it looks. This is what your finished lavender should look like, the texture. Same ingredients with the addition of uh, some herbs. So it just pops out beautifully out of the cheesecloth. That's it. Easy, simple, done. Just gonna put that in a bowl. When we play it up, we're gonna use it again. Put that gently into that. If your lavender doesn't pop out like that, then um, it's, it's not. It hasn't been standing long enough, so we just get all of that off there. And the muslin cloth, you can reuse it again. Just give it a good wash. And moving on to our next step. Okay, so one of the components that's going with our starter is our cauliflower hummus. So we're just going to cut our cauliflower into little pieces. And we're just going to roast it off. You can cut it, the smaller you cut it, the easier and the quicker and the faster it grows. So just cut your florets, take your leaves out, get it on a little roasting tray, and just pop it in the oven. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and we're gonna blend it together. That should be plenty, just the smaller you cut it. The quicker and easier the grows. So now it's gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Give it a good grind because it's got absolutely no taste. Some salt, some fresh black pepper. Got a little bit of oil on your as well. Just give it a good mix. Make sure everything is seasoned. Ready for the oven? Pop it in the oven. So what we're looking for is some nice golden brown florets. As soon as the florets are nice and golden brown, that's where we can incorporate the rest of our ingredients to it. So what we are, what we are gonna need is we're gonna need some lemon, we're gonna need some tahini paste, and we're gonna just zest this, we're gonna get all the zest from the lemon. That's about enough, and we're just gonna roll the lemon first. When you roll the lemon, you get you break up the fibers inside, and you get way more juice out of your lemon. It's gonna be very, very important when you're making our hummus. So, we're just gonna cut that in half. That's it. There's a fruit that's going with it. We're just gonna set the start. Lemon zest aside. Lemon juice aside, and we're just gonna wait for the next thing. So we're just gonna put this over here. As you can see, these are tortillas. We got a nice seal on it. We finish it in the oven. It's literally like a biscuit. Listen to the sound. If it doesn't crunch, it's not toasted enough. Instead of biscuits, use these. Boom. So next, you're gonna call it flour. Beautifully roasted. You got your nice color on there. So we're always going to take out the nicest ones, not the dark bits. Just get that in there. We're going to blend it all. Just get those florets in there. The best thing to do is to blend it while it's nice and hot. You got that nice char on there, but nice sexy color. It's going to incorporate a lot of flavor, and that is exactly what we want. Just be careful not to get any of the darker bits because that tends to be a lot better and it's a very unpleasant taste on the palate. 
So that's what we're gonna use. Can come to around to this side. So now we've got our cauliflower that's been roasted. We're gonna put a bit of tahini paste in. Quite a bit of tahini paste, I would say about three to four teaspoons to this amount of cauliflower. Because there's a secret in the hummus. This is what makes the hummus. Lemon juice, just give it a nice squeeze. That's your acid. Because you need some fresh acid in your in your hummus, lemon zest in. Even if you're gonna need a bit of salt and pepper in there, because it doesn't have any taste as well. So, salt. Pepper. And then, we're gonna blend. Good to go. Easy peasy. Little bit more lemon juice. Put that down and then So uh, we're just gonna start with some fruit. So some beautiful stone fruit. We're just gonna cut in half. Really sharp scandal in my view. <laughs> it just went straight through the fruit. Did you see that? I just like to keep it drastic, so just a few slices of the fruit. Nice and the ripe. The ripe of the fruit, the higher the sugar content usually goes. So this is going to be quite sweet sour. That's what I like about um, these kind of fruit. You know, stone fruit that they tend to be sweet and they tend to be acidic, which is going to be quite a nice balance and a nice contrast to what we're going to be plating up. So here we got our beautiful stone fruit that's been cut. Add some beautiful strawberries to this. It's in season. And it's also nice and acidic. And it also looks beautiful on the plate. So let's just get all our fruits in here. Right, let's start plating up. So first things first, we're gonna start with some of the cheese. So the lavender, this is our roast garlic lavender. This is obviously a lavender that I made earlier in the week, so we're just gonna give that a nice smear down your little platter. Smear down. We got some hummus, red oil, some of the hummus, and just push that down. It's really elastic, really easy. Our tortillas that we made earlier, just gonna break this up. Break it up and just assemble it around your cheese platter. Try to make it kind of bigger than biscuit size, so. You know, this is, um, this is definitely finger food, comfort food, so you can just scoop it up with your hands. You don't need any cutlery with this, literally. You just break it up and you can eat as much as you want. Or eat as you go. Just 
I'm gonna add a few pieces of fruit to this. Adds beautiful acidity, strawberries as well. Lovely to have a drink with on a Saturday afternoon. Like you're just chilling with your friends. <laughs> you just pull up one of these platters. And that's it. That's my uh, Kines Kitchen cheese platter. Um, homemade lambda, ghost garlic lambda, cauliflower hummus, fresh uh, fruit. Done, easy, let's enjoy. Let's take a guard here, so we're we'll standing by waiting patiently to try and taste this. Guys, have a long way. I believe that anybody can cook. Um, cooking, you should bring joy. Like cooking has brought me joy. So um, enjoy your cooking. Um, keep practicing, and um, the more we practice, the better we get. And food brings and cooking brings a lot of joy to people's lives, and it brings a lot of joy to my life. And I hope that after watching this, um, I'll convey that, and you enjoy my dishes that I cook today, and you prepare them. Thanks for watching. Cheers.